Hey guys, got an extra special video for you today. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I got this shotgun 10 years ago, 11 years ago, and I got the 24 inch barrel, and I've been meaning to cut it down to 18 inches. I believe it's 18, which is the shortest you can have um, a shotgun. It's gotta be 24 inches overall, I believe. Um, without paying the $200 to register for a short barrel shotgun license. I don't even remember what it's called. Um, and it wasn't the, the cutting the barrel down, it was the it was the re-threading the barrel after it's been cut down so that I could put my um, muzzle brake on it that I had. And I found this tool uh, from CSS Holdings LLC, and I'll put a link to their site in the, in, in the description below. But this is what's been holding me up this whole time and not moving forward with this project. And that is not having uh, this, this particular tool. I didn't thought I got that. It did, apparently. <laughs> there we go. And so what we have here is uh, the threading, the barrel threading kit for a Saiga 12. So it's a M22 by 0.75 right-handed threading kit. It's a four-part tool. Uh, I found a 10 or 20 percent coupon online, and it came in at about a hundred dollars shipped, maybe 106 shipped. So let's uh, let's see what else is in this. Okay, Tap Magic Pro Tap Cutting Fluid. This is like oil. Here's the actual die. that we'll be using to thread the barrel. This uh, goes into the barrel, this goes into the barrel so that it threads straight, so that slides right in there. You actually, uh, I forget which way to do it, I'll have to check again but that goes in there to make sure it's going on straight and this last thing should be um, the die handle look at this big boy okay for you those of you who do not know the Saiga 12 is a semi-automatic, magazine-fed, 12-gauge shotgun on an AK-47 frame. It is made by Ismash, Ismash Arms in Russia. Um, this says made in the USA because the, the dressings that I have on it and the magazine are all uh, made in America by AGP Arms Inc. So I bought this about mm, 10, 11, 12 years ago, and the 24 inch hunting barrel was cheaper than the uh, 18 inch barrel. And I've always been unhappy with how long this barrel is with tactical dress on it. And I've always wanted to cut it down, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, some of the tools we're gonna be using, tape measure, masking tape, driveway marker, just because I don't have a dowel rod, um, metal cutting blade, rat tail file, uh, flat file, even though I have a three-sided triangle file, the die set I showed you earlier, and then some clamps. So you actually measure the barrel length from the inside of the barrel. That's, that's what we have this for. But to give you an idea, um, when I put this in here, you see it goes to right at mm, just a little, like right at 24 inches. But to get that 
um, absolutely correct legally according to the statutes. We're going to run that in there. We're going to mark off where that is. And then get an accurate of the barrel. See, the barrel is actually not 24. It's actually oh, 24 and a quarter. So the barrel is actually 24 and a quarter. Quarter measured measured from the inside how they would legally measure it. So that gives us an extra quarter inch to play with when measuring from this spot that I'm using on the outside of the gun. Uh, 24 inches is there. We're actually going to mark down 16 inches, uh, I'm sorry, 18 inches, and then take two more off for my muzzle brake that will go on the end of it. And I'm going to come off camera so I can do this a little better and then come back and show you what we got. So here's the muzzle brake I have. It's a uh, Chaos muzzle brake, also made in the USA. I don't know the, the company that made this. The, the company might be called Chaos, I don't know, or this particular version might be called. These points are incredibly sharp. I actually have a scar <laughs> from it. Uh, yeah, actually right there. Uh, long story. So this would, if you hit somebody with this, it would go straight through them. You, you, you cannot imagine how incredibly sharp this is. So I call this a door breaching muzzle brake because you can jam it into the lock and it won't slide and then you blow the lock out with the 12 gauge. Um, but this adds a little bit extra to the length and I'm going to say, I, I'm not a lawyer and I, I've, I've read the laws obviously, um, but I'm going to say with this extension, I, I'm going to say that it is, uh, I'm going to add this on to the 18. So, and if I have to permanently put this on there to make that legal, then I'll, I'll do that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about me. You do you. Um, so when I, when I put the driveway marker back down the barrel, it actually does come out right to 24. So it must've been on an angle when I was measuring earlier, or I just, you know, pulled it out really fast and saw where my finger was. So we are going to call that exactly 24. And when I measure from the outside, what I've chosen to measure from here, it is almost 20. It's actually a little bit under 24. So we need to find somewhere that will give us exactly 24 to measure from. And really, like I said, that's close enough. So let's call that 24. I'm gonna show you how much length this adds to the barrel. Actually, I don't even know if you can, I don't know if that's in frame, I'm sorry. Add on there. And, and this is supposed to be facing the top. I need to get a crush washer. I could probably torque it around so it was at the top but let's just go ahead and see how much this adds on to our measurement. Got our masking tape here. Just gonna pull this to the top. Call it right there. Okay. So instead of 24, we're looking at 26 call it 26 and 3 sixteenths. Yeah, we'll call it 26. So it, ooh, 26 and 3 sixteenths. So we got two extra inches to work with right there. So the plan is to cut this down to 16 inches and then thread this guy on there so that we're at 18. Again, 
I'm not a lawyer. I'm not saying this is legal. I'm saying that if I have to permanently put that on there to make the 18 legal, then I will. So just so we get an idea of what we're working with here, we're looking at right. Drag this out a little bit so that it'll stay out there. We were measuring from right here, and I'm even giving it a little extra play just to make sure. puts us at 18. A little bit past 18. 18 and a quarter. So now that I have our so now that we have our masking tape on there. All the way around just to, just to make sure yeah. now that we have that on there we're going to clamp this to the table and start making our cut right here so I got him clamped down and we're just going to start slowly right here making our cut. Uh, we got we got them all, we got the barrel off of there. Uh, kind of straight. <laughs> not not uh, the straightest, but I'm just gonna hit this with the file right here. Kind of get these burrs off of here. And man, I keep, I'm going to keep scratching out that barrel. But, so, I'm just going to get the burrs off of the inside and the outside like this. I'm not going to worry too much about making this completely flat across here. We'll see how it seats. We've got an inch of thread to work with. Um, to give you an idea, this thing is three inches long. There's an inch of thread here and two inches off the set, off the edge like that. Um, I did look up the law, so if um, the muzzle brake attachment is permanently attached, then it counts toward the 18 inches. If it's not permanently attached, then it doesn't count. So I will be soldering this on. Uh, one of the recommendations was to use silver solder, so I will be soldering that on so it's permanently attached. Uh, I can also use a washer if, it, say, we get this seated and it's like 17 and three quarters of an inch. Um, we can just, well, three quarters is pretty thick, but I could use a, a washer and a, a rubber washer or a crush washer and get that to where it needs to be. Silver solder that in place and we're good. So that's the plan. Uh, I'm going to do some of this filing off camera and then we'll come back on before I start uh, using the die. All right, so a couple things here. This is the old barrel. You can see I've got the die here and I can just test to make sure this is what's supposed to be happening. See that is the correct die here. Um, and it needs to go on this way and thread like this. All right. So now that I know that's the way it goes, this is what's going to make us cut our threads perpendicular to the barrel so we can get it started in here.
And this is a precision tool, don't force it. Make sure you, see I keep messing it up on here. I got it on the barrel much easier. But this, make sure you take your time, get this correct, because this is what's going to, see this slide, this seat's in here. This is what's gonna make sure the threads transfer exactly where they're supposed to. And that's also why I kind of rasped or filed down just a slight make sure there was no burr on there literally two seconds later all right so do it from the front just make sure it's lined up and now it's turning on there so I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this oil on here where's my pocket knife Um, because this is going to help us not mess it up. And I'm going to put it on these threads just so, well, probably help if I actually open the oil instead of just pretending to open the oil. But I'm going to put it on the threads so that by the time, and then I'll put some more on the actual barrel. Man, this stuff is serious. <laughs> don't try this on. Don't try this at home. I should say, don't try this on TV. Just to get an idea for the the oil, I'm gonna put a little bit here. Whoa, that's not a little bit. So just so you know, that stuff really comes out. So then we're gonna drop it into our die handle. And let's see, we've got points there and there. So we're just going to figure out which one of these we want to put it in. Get a point right there. Yeah, I'm feeling some raised edges down here where the paint is. Right in there. That might be a flaw in the craftsmanship that's going to keep us from seating that thing properly. Alright, I'm going to turn the camera off, see if I can deal with this, and then we'll come back. Alright guys, I hit it with the Dremel real quick, see in there to clean up some of that epoxy. And uh, after that, it dropped right in. So, we're going to find this part right here, get this screw in there so that it doesn't turn. Okay. And we're going to tighten these other screws down. All right. And then let's make sure we didn't <laughs> tighten it. There we go. I actually, we tightened it a little too much. All right, there we go. So we have this on here so that it will spin like we want it. We're gonna back this off just a little bit, all right? Because we're gonna make that line up with our cutting. There we go, we've got about one thread off. We're gonna stick this in here, okay? And then that's gonna be our guide. We need to go about one inch down on this thing. So I'm gonna take my longest side. If I'm not in frame, I'm sorry guys, I'm trying. We're gonna go, yeah, I thought that was one inch, but we're gonna go like this. on here kind of straight check again make sure we're mostly the one inch mark okay 
Now all this does is guide and, like I said, make sure it's going straight. Okay? Like this when we start turning. I'm going to clamp this guy back down and then we'll come. You just go a little bit, back off, go a little bit, back off, and we'll get back to it. Okay guys, just in case I wasn't clear, the this is in some. I made it sound like it was sticking out and I did have it sticking out earlier, but it's it's actually in some so these can start cutting on these threads as soon as they get there. Alright? So they're gonna want to, and I've got that smoothed down. I felt a rough spot back there, but I'm gonna generally, generously apply this cutting oil and then see what happens when we start our cut. I might have missed some footage there where I was talking about I had to go back, dremel this smooth before I could keep going. Um, you also have to take this out before you get to it. And now I'm hoping we are finishing this bad boy up. Which seems to be the case. I'm just going to keep going until I get all the way down. <sighs> Hoping this is... It looks... It seems to be working correctly. just uh, took me a while to get it started and going. Learn from my mistakes. Watch what I did wrong. Okay. Yeah, I had to sand down, sand all of the coating off and it just, it was easier to do with the Dremel. And now it looks like and then I left this on too long and it got stuck. And you see it's already coming out the back over here. It did not twist and come out like I thought it was going to. This is just to get the thing started. Once you're on there good and going, take this guy back out. But yeah, it looks like I think it looks good. I mean, I could be crooked. It could not come out there and could not come out correctly. It might not take the muzzle brake. I might be left with an illegal shotgun, <laughs> which I will get a new barrel for. ATF, please do not come after me. I have no criminal record. I'm a law-abiding citizen. <sighs> All right, let's back that joker off of there and see what we got. Yeah. Looks good. Looks really good. I'm gonna actually take this off so that it's not adding extra weight when the other thing comes off the end. See? We're good. There we go. 
Now, I need some. Ah, the paper towel's fine. I was gonna say I need some shop towels, but okay. Well, let's see what happens. Because the only thing that matters is this thing going on there and fitting. That is the only thing we were trying to get out of this and also not leaving me with an illegal shotgun. Alright. There it is. And because it's sticking out here, I can guarantee you we are not less than, oh man, 18 and a half. 18 and a half inches. And that's where that half inch is right there with this on there. So now right now this is still removable. We are going to uh, solder this. We're actually going to take off So yeah, ATF, I'm going to I'm going to silver solder this on so that it is permanent part of the barrel. Thereby meeting your requirements for an 18-inch barrel. It has to be 26 overall. It is more than 26 even without that. I got 36 inches right there with my collapsible stock. So, I'm actually going to hit I'm going to hit this with the Dremel a little bit. Get this down a little bit more so it seats further back onto there where I wanted it to and then we'll come back at the end take a look at it and I'll give you my thoughts on someone never as someone who has never done this before but is pretty good at figuring stuff out I would say that's one of my strengths is figuring out how to do things uh, running into problems and then solving them so all right we'll be back in a bit all right, guys, my final thoughts on this die set um, from CSS Holding LLC from Charlotte, North Carolina. I like it. It did what I needed it to do. It did what it said it would do, and it was fairly easy. If I didn't have the Dremel to ream this out a little bit, there was a paint was a little too heavy in there. This guy didn't want a seat. Uh, I mean that happens, you know. That's uh, it doesn't mean it's it doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean you shouldn't get it. Just be prepared to overcome stuff like that. So it was just like that. Whatever that coating on there was was just a little bit too thick right there. This thing fit perfectly in the barrel. Um, got the thread started correctly. This guy was precision, cut strong, didn't strip it out, and. Um, like I said, I've had this guy for 10, 11 years, and I've been wanting to cut this barrel down, and the only thing that was stopping me is because I never found a die set that was like this, all in one, that was the correct size for this guy. I mean, I could find this, or this, or this separately, but all in one place, and they, I bought this with my own money. Like I said, they, they're not paying me to do this review. Um, but I think this is, if you have a Saiga 12 and you've been thinking about cutting it down, uh, or any Saiga or any 12 gauge shotgun that takes the 22 M by 0.75, go for it. If you guys have, have done this mod before, or you've done other mods, uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you on the ridge. Mm -hmm.